Welcome to the Norwich Workshop where we're going to turn this uh, dinky 025 cassette Jaguar into a Raspberry Ripple. Well, let's take the uh, casting apart and see what we've got. Uh, it's not looking the best inside. See it's been heavily modified. It's got some large screws there. Unfortunately that sort of renders this casting inoperable but it's still good for spares. And luckily I've got a, another casting that I can use to take its place. And all that needs is a repair to one wheel. Right, so I've got to repair this uh, wheel on the lower casting. There's a repair to do on the top casting as well. And uh, then I'm going to buff these up. So back from uh, paint stripping, I'm going to use this uh, bench grinder with a wire buffing wheel just to remove any excess paint corrosion dirt and grime and so forth and uh, polish up the surface make it uh, much easier to paint with so I'll do that now remember to uh, if you're using a grinder wear glasses right there we are all ready to paint we'll start with the blue got my large capacity gun no need for masking just going to put a wet coat of uh, the uh, blue base colour on the fuselage get it from every angle and uh, make sure I've got a proper coat, not too thick right, first masking line, we're masking the blue in anticipation of painting red I'm using quarter inch automotive uh, masking tape it's not a good idea to go cheap with masking tape you'll pay later on. Right, we'll start with the red. Got my uh, detailing gun, low capacity. All I'm trying to do here is affect a colour change. You notice that I'm painting perpendicular to the mask line so I don't uh, encourage any paint to uh, blow past or underneath the masking tape itself. Don't be in a hurry. Not looking too bad. I can now finish off the uh, extremities. This is the easy part. Some areas you can't mask with masking tape or it's undesirable to use masking tape in this case I'm using a piece of box card the packaging from a uh, grocery item and I'm going to uh, mask off the uh, tail of the fuselage which I want to remain blue and the tail plane which I want to paint red this is not ideal where I've got the gun pointing directly at the uh, mask card itself but I don't seem to have much choice in this uh, particular example but with a low capacity gun there shouldn't be a lot of blow by. Right, finish off the uh, red on the underside of the wings. Notice that uh, when the paint is flowing from the nozzle the gun is always moving. There's a relationship between the volume of paint coming out of the gun, the distance that you hold it from the job and the speed at which the gun moves across the job comes with experience. So I'll just finish painting the red and uh, then I can let that uh, dry. So you notice the gun is always moving. Time to let that dry. And removing the masking, this is always a fraught with danger. The idea is to go nice and slowly. And you can see that I'm peeling along a line that's parallel with the actual masking line itself. So by doing that, hopefully, I won't. Uh, disturb the uh, paint along the uh, masking boundary. 
if the masking tape is too sticky you can uh, run your fingers across the sticky side of it and that will um, reduce the chance that it pulls the uh, paint up when you remove it unfortunately here I've uh, applied too thick a coat of red and as I attempt to pull the masking tape off you will see that it pulls the paint away as well it's not very good so what I have to do is now pull it parallel and the line's sharp but you can see it's pulled up the uh, blue paint we'll come back and uh, repair or retouch that later the other side then it's looking a little bit better there's some blue paint lifting there but that's easy to uh, touch up because it's actually not on the uh, mask line itself the higher quality masking tape you buy the lower the number of problems like this that you'll have with it this is automotive detailing masking tape quarter inch and uh, it seems to be the best certainly that I've found and again carefully pulling the uh, tape away from the job you can see there's some paint missing there and there and around the other side we've got a large piece that's been torn off we'll come back and do that later masking the red for painting white now you can see I'm still attempting to follow the casting lines themselves and lightly pressing the tape in around any dimples or depressions in the casting this line here is critical not only does it have to be the right thickness but it's got to be symmetrically positioned as well I'm starting with a casting line it's actually in the engine intake I'm trying to follow that piece of masking tape itself is nice and long and the reason I've got a long piece that's longer than the length of the item is so that I can uh, tension it a little and make sure that it's uh, run straight and tight Here I'm pressing in masking tape around a casting line so we don't get any overspray blowing past it which will of course destroy the sharpness of the line and then I can just stretch this tape out check that it's symmetrical with the casting and with the opposite line on the other side and lightly press down on the edge to be painted again same thing nice long piece of masking tape position it correctly press down lightly and then cut to fit now here I'm masking around a uh, radius at the base of the fin I'm using masking tape to do this so what I've done is I've pressed the masking tape along that radius casting line and now I'm going to uh, cut it along that radius line with a modelling knife this will give me a piece of uh, masking tape which matches the base of the fin perfectly as you can see I'm using another casting if you don't have a spare casting make sure that you perform all these masking procedures and templates before you actually start the job and just have them available in that way you're not attempting or you're not going to damage the uh, paint that you've already applied 
Now I just lift that carefully away from the fin, cut off the ends. And it does look a bit fiddly, but it uh, works out really well in the end. And there I have a piece of masking tape that is perfectly cut to the shape of the fin. Now the uh, other side, exactly the same again, press down the masking tape, push it into the cast line with a uh, fingernail, so it's sitting right up against that uh, cast crease, cut along the line that I wish to mask with a modelling knife. So, and you'll also notice that the piece of tape itself is quite long. The reason I have a nice long piece of tape is so it's much easier to handle and manipulate into position. Carefully pull that up. And there we are. That's the other side done. Now to apply those to the job itself, remembering that a nice long piece of tape is easy to manipulate. And carefully put that into uh, position and then once I've got it where I want, I just press down lightly on it with my finger and then when I've got it exactly where I want it, I'll cut the ends to fit. Right, the other side. Again, nice long piece of tape so it can be stretched into position with ease and manipulated and once it's in place just carefully press it down and cut to size Right, next I'm going to put a thin strip of masking tape along that trailing edge of the fuselage. The quarter inch width masking tape is too wide so I'm going to take a strip and cut it down the center. I'm using the uh, top of the aluminium jaws of my vise. So I just lay a piece of masking tape down on there and with a modelling knife I'll just cut that approximately in half. It doesn't have to be a straight line. I've got one straight edge and when it's not straight all I have to do is remember which one is which. So there's the straight edge there, that side. So keeping that in mind, I'll now position this thin piece of tape along the top of the rear of the fuselage. This is an important mask line. It has to be sharp. I apologize for having a slightly out of frame. But the techniques that you've seen in applying this piece of uh, tape are exactly the same. Right, now to uh, 
carry on with the nose. You can see there's a casting line there. I'm trying to match that piece of masking tape too. That's where I want it to start. I'll get that exactly in place. It's fiddly, I know, but I want to get it right and uh, commit, compare the symmetry with the other side. No, not quite in the right spot. So I'll just reposition that. And there's also a um, casting line that I have to press the tape against. And that finally looks right. Now I'll just press the masking tape along that casting line so I don't get any paint blowing past the mask line itself. And because that piece of tape is nice and long, I can stretch it and bend it slightly, manipulate it, and get it just the right spot for the thickness of the line and the symmetry of the line as well. And when it's in place, just lightly press down on the edge that is to form the mask. We're now finishing up with the tail. This is the easy bit. All I'm doing now is just covering the empennage for overspray and you can see that this is systematic. I'm starting from the inside working out and by doing that all the pieces of masking tape are um, interlaid with each other so when I pull the inside one they all come away at the same time. Right, now it's uh, time to paint white. See there that the masking tape is just lifted a little off the job so I just pat that down with my finger. This is another dry coat just affecting a colour change and no more. Again, the nozzle is at uh, 90 degrees to the job itself. And I just work along those uh, mask lines until the white is done. This is the easy bit. Now the tail, this is very important that the volume of paint coming out of the gun nozzle is low otherwise it will somehow leak around the uh, edges of the masking tape because it's in a uh, apex corner. So all I want to do is affect a colour change and no more and that will promote a sharp mask line. dry, time to remove the tape. Again, go nice and slowly. You see there a little bit of uh, red paint has come away with the masking tape, but it's nowhere near the mask line itself, so that'll be easy to touch up later on. just ease the masking tape away from the job. And there's another spot there that's going to need touching up but again it's a long way from the mask line itself so that'll be easy. And to get into tight corners you can use tweezers and I've got a pair of a set of dentist probes I'm just going to lift up on this, carefully lift up on this piece of masking tape. As you can see this is a slow, very slow process. This line's important, it's got to be absolutely perfect. And that looks pretty good. Same on the other side. Just work 
carefully and methodically. This line here has to be sharp as well. So I've got to pull the masking tape carefully parallel along the mask line itself. And that doesn't look too bad. of areas there where I have to there's some overspray there from the white that I have to touch up but that'll be easy and there's a few areas where the paint's been lifted but, uh, that'll be a short job right now I'm going to use a, a piece of a box card to mask and respray the area where the paint lifted on the nose. So I've got the box card hard up against the white line. I'm spraying red. The closer the box card is to the casting, the sharper the line will be. The further away it is, of course, the more blurred or feathered the line will be. Here I've got two pieces of masking tape masking the uh, red line which has got some blue overspray on it after I touched up the blue. This is another way of doing the same thing. It's more difficult when you're masking both sides of a line though because it's easy to get the symmetry wrong. Just carefully peel that away. Right, ready for final assembly. Now it's assembled, the wheels are still masked, I'm going to paint with clear. Clear is a two pot mix, the clear itself and hardener. Let's clean the tops of the lids, any dirt and dust before I open it and pour it. four parts clear to one part hardener. Once mixed you must use it regardless of the condition it's in. You can easily measure by putting a ruler in the jar or using a uh, dipstick with graduations. I'm just going to guess more. Right, so that's four parts clear, one part hardener. And if I don't use this within 24 hours then I throw it away. Regardless of its apparent appearance. Right, mix that together and uh, now I'll add some all-purpose thinners I'm going to mix this to the consistency of water so it'll spray easily through the gun one of the ways of testing that is with the screwdriver blade and it should drop off and run down the side of the uh, container like uh, water and if it does it's thinned enough. When I spray with uh, clear I normally have a number of jobs to do at the same time. Here I'm doing the wings of a uh, Joe 90 102. spray and angle my eyesight down on the item to be painted so it's easier to see the light shining off the surface and that way I can tell when it's wet with the clear coat. The Jaguar itself you can see the gun is always moving if the gun stops and there's anything coming out of the nozzle it will pull and then run 
try and start off with a dryish coat to begin with and then slowly work it up to a wet coat. This first coat is in anticipation of uh, applying the decals. This is not the time to drop it on the ground, so go carefully. Underside, you can see There it is now, it's touched dry, nice and shiny, and I'll apply the decals to the shiny surface. So they'll apply easily and uh, look good when they're uh, coated with clear. If you're using old decal sheets like me, you may wish to take an unobtrusive sample of the decal sheet and put that in water first and see if it uh, keeps its integrity or breaks up. If it breaks up, then spray the entire decal sheet with a coat of clear and that'll help it to maintain its integrity when it's uh, in water. Right, decals applied. Now I have to put a coat of clear over the top of the decals to seal them. This is a very dry or dust coat the reason I use a dry coat is to ensure that the decals don't react with the clear. If you start with a very wet coat, there's a good chance that they will react and start to uh, peel. So you can see that the shine is disappearing off the item itself and that's because I'm using a very dry dust coat of uh, clear and this is just to seal the decals and to keep them from reacting with a later wet coat of clear. And let that dry. And now it's time to build up slowly the clear coat over the decals and uh, over the entire item. Remember to always keep the gun moving if there's uh, a spray pattern coming out of the nozzle. Start off with a light coat and work up to one that is thicker and thicker. can finish the underside and the last of the uh, clear on the top side decals are still intact they're nicely sealed so I can now apply a nice wet coat of clear to give it a shine if I was intending this to have a semi-gloss or a matte finish, I would allow this clear coat to dry, to touch, and then I would spray a further dry coat of clear over the top of that to remove the shine. So, first coat of clear on the paint, apply the decals over that, and then a dust coat over the decals to seal, seal them in place, allow that to dry, followed by a gradually increasing wet coat for the finished job and uh, if it is intended uh, to have a uh, semi-gloss or matte finish then after that has dried you would apply a final dust coat clear over the top of that to remove the shine.
mind that's looking pretty good now you can see the decals are still intact there's been no reaction nice shine on the surface so we've only got uh, two more things to do and that is to apply a black anti-glare strip on the nose and uh, a black stripe on the top of the fin so here is the masking template that I'm using for the anti-glare strip on the nose so I've just measured this up and with a spare casting I'm going to see how it looks so again a very light coat in this case black just affecting a change of color if the coat is too wet it will leak past the uh, masking card and uh, destroy the integrity of the sharp lines um, there that looks pretty good so we'll use that if you're painting over clear for whatever reason to avoid a paint reaction between the paint and the coat of clear you must use a very dry coat to begin with so you can see here this is a very very dry dust coat of black and I'll just build it up to affect a color change and no more so it avoids a paint reaction with the clear and it avoids paint leaking past the masking template of the box card There we are, all but finished. All we have to do now is do the same with the tail. Hope you've enjoyed the video and that you've got some something worthwhile out of it. Happy painting.